Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today I have a really exciting build I want to show you guys. So I mentioned recently in a Top Heroes video that I think Lena Carey, Lena Safelane, yeah, Lena Safelane, not Lena Mid, is one of the top builds right now. And honestly, you're going to see in this replay here, I have a game, this is one of my teammates actually, he went 24 and 1 uh, with 15 assists, an absolute domination of the game and a pretty long game too. Like not a game where the enemy team gave up instantly, right? A game where you definitely had to grind for the win. But this hero is just, it's, it's just a farming maniac. Just for a little bit of perspective on the net worth, at minute 10, he, okay, keep in mind he's against a TA, which is also one of the top farming heroes, but he is just so ahead. As I said, TA is also like, if you know what TA is, this hero is, is just a farm machine. Lena is literally a better version of that in a lot of ways, because I would argue Lena is a better laner than TA, and I would argue Lena actually scales better than TA as well. So honestly, when it comes to ranged right clickers, I actually think you can make an argument at this current point in time that Lena might be the best out of all of them. Drow, TB, TA on average. Okay. Obviously every hero has their advantage based on matchups. For instance, Drow has anti-healing. TB can make copies of enemy heroes. Sometimes Sunder is useful. Illusions for pushing out dead lanes can be, can be good, but this Lena carry has so many advantages. So let's get into it. Also, I want to tell you guys that if you've been struggling with solo queue and you're looking to get to the next rank, I'm going to be able to help you. Like literally with the Game Leap website, I'm going to give you guys guides that are going to make it unbelievably clear on what you need to do. So if you've been stuck in the solo queue grind, you don't know what to do, and you want to become absolutely broken, <laughs> but like actually you want to become much, much better at Dota, and you want to take it more seriously, the Game Leap website is going to help you do that. So click the link down below. I'm going to help you get to the next rank, and I'll see you there. He goes for kind of a weird starting item build. Um, I definitely think there's a few different builds you can go. You can kind of go for like... I do like his items, by the way, the two branches, blades of attack. It's nice. I think he lost some gold because you can go three branches, blades of attack if you don't lose any gold, which should be your starting items. Um, but other builds you can go, having a stick is nice. If the enemy lane is very, very spell intensive, you can go stick, you can go tangos, two mangos. Instead, he's just going to actually maximize the level one damage and make it easier to last it and put pressure. From there with Lina, naturally, because of the fact that your hero has some of the highest attack range in the game, you're going to put pressure just by attacking the enemy off cooldown. Anytime there is no CS and no deny, you should be hitting your opponent. This is how this hero works. Goes for the deny. Okay, you don't want to obviously chase into a double wave, but then nukes and hits hits. That is one key component to Lena's laning stage. I'm going to try to break down the laning mid game and, and late game, give a couple of tips for each, and we'll go from there. But yeah, basically, he's going to secure this creep. And one of the best ways to pressure is by nuking the creep. And then in, instead of expending that auto attack on, on the creep, he uses the nuke for that and then can hit the opponent. This is something you want to do consistently and it gets better over time when you get points in your passive. But yeah, you can see two, maybe three autos on the shaker then can hit the razor by pulling creep aggro. Don't hit and run forward. You will die. You're not tanky yet. Okay, you're kind of slow at level one. You're a ranged hero with bad armor. Don't hit and run forward. You want to nuke, hit, hit, and then chill. You're going to pull creep aggro. Don't nuke and run forward. You are griefing. Okay, so yeah. So the lane gets a little bit hard for him. I will admit it's best to pick Lena carry if you have a melee support that has a setup stun for your W. As you will be taking the W at level 3 and looking to go for kills, as hopefully at this point you've kind of harassed down your enemy. You've chipped them down a bit and now you can look for a kill. Uh, this lane has been a little bit rough for him. He's not getting fed too many tangos from Disruptor, so things are a bit weird. But you can see, when you hit seven stacks of your Fury Soul, or Fiery Soul, people get so mad when I call it Fury. Can you not say Fury? Can't this word be pronounced in two ways, Fury or Fiery? It doesn't matter. Either way, you get 70 attack speed. That's insanely high, right? Gloves of Haze, just for a bit of perspective, is only 20, right? And when you buy a Gloves of Haze, you notice an attack speed increase. Lina gets 70 with max stacks, so you can obviously tell how, how hard you're going to right click, as this is one time speed, you just rip people apart if they get isolated, so any lane that's stun into stun is devastating, um, de completely devastating, like absolutely brutal uh, to lane into, so yeah, either way, he can now, oh what a glimpse, that's a great play and they get a double kill, so I guess that is kind of the synergy, they have glimpse in LSA. <laughs> As, uh, as they pick up a nice kill. As he queues up the Javelin, is he really going to buy that? No, okay. Yeah, he changes his mind. Ships out, infuse raindrops, stick it, and, and mangoes, or a mango, and I like that. You're going to need mana region to sustain this. That's partially why the Falcon Blade's good. 
The Falcon Blade is also great because it gives you flat damage, and that's what you want when you have so much attack speed. From there, the build is max E, and I had people tell me in the past that I was wrong for taking two points E. I just want to say, frick the haters, guys, because it literally means when you have two stacks or two points in this and you have seven stacks, instead of having 70 bonus attack speed, you get 140. I mean, that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's also an increase to the movement speed. It's not nearly a doubling. That's only, what, a 33% increase or something like that? But the point is, is that the zero just becomes nuts. And nuts, if you have a setup stun and you have seven stacks, the hero will take half their health, minimum, to this combo, minimum. A lot of heroes will just die into, from a stun stun to Alina with seven stacks. And from there, he picks up a Javelin. Javelin is, an, is a proc-based item that does damage, and this is particularly good on Lina once again, because she has attack speed, which is why the first item you will be buying is a Maelstrom, and you will see the farming potential of this. Now, once you have level seven, this hero is devastating. Absolutely devastating. There's no other way to put it. The damage output, even if you're having a bad game, like, and you've lost your lane somehow, which Lina's a good laner, it should be pretty hard to do that, but, like, the damage output is, is ridiculous. Just for a bit of perspective, this is 280 attack speed, okay? 280 attack speed. Focus Fire, Wind Ranger's ultimate, which she has a cooldown on, is 350. It's 70 less. That's it. Th that should tell you something. Now, it does mean you're not maxing out your nukes, but you don't need them. All you're using your nukes for is to build up stacks. The current state of Lena is that in order to build up stacks so you get this attack speed and the movement speed, is you have to hit creeps or heroes with the abilities. And then, and then if you hit a creep or an ability, it refreshes the seven stacks, or your current set of stacks, for 18 seconds. Which is a long time. It used to be much shorter. It used to be, I think, 13. They changed this ability a bit, though. Um, you used to be able to just hit nothing and it would refresh the stacks. But either way, look at the damage on the Razor. And of course, when you get Laguna Blade, that's just a 500 damage nuke. So your kill potential with a plus one is just ridiculous. He misses his stun here, but with a javelin proc and then his, his ulti, boom, Razor just evaporates. And he doesn't even have a setup stun. Like, literally, this is so unoptimized. Disruptor Lina is a horrible lane combo. This is horrendous. It's a horrible lane combo. I would not draft this. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> it just, uh, to be fair, he's laning in Shaker. I will admit, I think if this Shaker was like a clock or a tusk, his lane would have been way harder because there's like better gap close. Um, but... You could say that, but he also wasn't laning with, like, Treant or Clockwork or Tusk or Marcy. One of these devastating heroes that just dumpsters with Lina. And now from here, you get into the farming stage. You're going to max out your stun because that allows you to stun them for longer when you're auto-attacking them. You're not going to max your Q because you're actually not going to max it at all. And now with Maelstrom, this is where the farming begins. I'm going to quickly play this game at one time speed. <clears throat> just so you can really see how fast you farm, right? This is one time speed. It's going to move down to this next camp. Actually, probably could have stacked the camp there. I would have liked to see that. He's going to head over to the mid wave, right? Seven stacks. Might nuke just to keep up his stacks here. Probably should do that. Yep, there you go. And then um, I guess he's going to move over towards the DD. Has to be careful. Yeah, I was going to say, should not walk up to the tiny there. That that could be a big risk. Should just continue farming here. Move over to, to the ancients. I wouldn't have mind seeing him maybe stay on the bottom side of the map and continue farming that up. I feel like that could have been a reasonable play as he's going to take ancients. But even ancients, when the maelstrom kicks in, um, it just becomes... It's not hard. It's just not hard to take Ancients. Like, the only issue your hero has a bit of a sustain issue as he hits a stun onto the tiny. And in the stun duration, he does half of his health with just autos. Laguna comes out, and that's a tiny! This hero has 14 armor with the face boots and grow, and 1500 HP, and he just basically solo killed him. You can't even say Ember did a lot of damage to tiny there, because if I play this out, this Ember... Okay, he does a little. Okay, let's say Ember did like 300 damage, right? Probably it did about 300 damage. No joke, maybe 200. And he's just dead. That's the power of this Lina. With a stun, and you might be like, oh, he's so farmed. You pick a game where he's so farmed. Okay, yes, he's farmed. But most games, if you don't have Maelstrom right now, you are poor. Keep in mind, we are showing a clip where he now has 1,500 gold. Previous to that tiny kill, he had 900 gold. He's more farmed than you usually would be. A very common timing on this Lina is these items at minute 10, 30, 11 is very common. And from there, guys, I just want to keep in mind, he pushes the mid tower. This is because there's a lot of heroes dead and the two current heroes that are alive do not threaten him. They are not jump heroes. You have to be very afraid of jump heroes. At the end of the day, you're playing a squishy hero and most of the time you should be farming neutrals when you have Maelstrom. It's as simple as that. You're a greedy farming carry. Yes, you can show up to fights as we just saw there. 
Compared to heroes like Drow, Lina's um, ability to add to fights right now is extremely high compared to certain heroes, compared to certain scaling carries. So, like, that's one benefit. If you do show up, you're still very useful. You hit like a truck. Um, but outside of the fact that you still want to flash farm, primarily, you're just going to go from camp to camp with a Maelstrom and 280 attack speed and just wipe through the jungle. He even goes bots. When you go bots on Lena, you're not as strong as you could be in team fights because he could go D Lance so he could stay further away. That builds a little bit weird because the stun range and the your attack range don't really match up, so it becomes a bit clunky. I don't he actually is going to D Lance. <laughs> so we'll see that play out, but it is a little bit clunky because when you stun, it's way less than your attack range. So typically you might not even stun. You you specifically, if you buy D Lance, will actually stun less if if that's something you should keep in mind because it is part of the build for a lot of players, but you have to be weary. This is going to TB mid. And yeah, this is a nice thing. Your movement speed is 495 with the bots. You're just like nearly haste, obviously. Close to haste. You get the point. Um, and yeah, you just show up and just evaporate the enemy team, right? And you can be so active. You can be so active and just clean up fights, right? You're just so active. And by the way, at level 10, you get a 20 damage talent. How nice is that? As Look at this TA. Oh, the arrow onto the tiny. <laughs> And now he can TB base. I think realistically he should run base. And then bots out to the wave. Yep, there you go. Beautiful. And you can be so efficient. Because this hero does have some resource problems. But the bots definitely help that out. And I will admit, I, I'm not a huge fan of the Dragonlance. It does make you very tanky. It gives you some armor. The attack range, some HP. But I think it's a bit clunky. I'm a, I'm a bigger fan. And the more safe build is definitely BKB. Um, the pup stomp build is like this. But the safe build is definitely BKB after Maelstrom. It's it's much safer as he actually queues it up here because you're you're countered by jump and most jump is magical early game. Most jump uh, early to mid game is not physical, so that's why BKB Lena Rush is so popular because typically everything that can kill you early game that has the range or the jump to kill you is is magical. So the early BKB is just it's so safe and you don't need a damage item. He's hitting for two hundred right now, not including Maelstrom procs, which do a lot of damage by the way. So yeah. And by the way, he's actually going to take stats and then his level 15 talent. And with the stats and the level 15 talent and the D-Lance and the Ograx, he now has 2,300 health. Very low on armor, though. So as I said, you can definitely struggle against physical jump if they have something like PA who's having a good game. You can struggle, but at the same time, those heroes don't usually... I mean, we're 19 minutes in here. These heroes aren't usually online yet. PA probably won't even have her BKB yet. So if she jumps you, she's not going to one-shot you at 2.4k HP. You can easily get off your stun and turn the fight around and burst her. And by the way, Maelstrom procs give true strike, so that's something to keep in mind. Another nice thing is your hero's really good at roaching. It's really good. But yeah, then with the bots, you generally want to play the side lane. We actually see a fight here. I don't really love his execution or his his uh, positioning, only because I think like you need to really play your follow up stun. So he should be playing much, uh, just generally careful. I, I think he gets caught off guard here, but you don't want to run through the river. Like be very careful about positioning like this this is definitely a, a greedy play arguably a mistake the enemy team's not showing anywhere you you want to be careful i mean hindsight's 2020 so it's easy for me to say that that was some crazy reaction time on the bkb but yeah just be careful about your positioning because your hero can get kited that's one of the downsides especially if you run out of stacks which he does your hero gets kited really easily so you do have to be careful like you have to be very very careful um about essentially over overplaying your hand not playing around your stuns you you will get kited that is the downside i mean that's the downside of like all of these ranged autos you know the, the medusas the snipers they're gonna get kited typically if if they don't have teammates around them and lena's the same but yeah tp's top here can continue to farm actually going for a satanic so he i think he's just seeing that he can become unkillable the enemy team doesn't have a scotty buyer if they had like a TB, I think the Satanic would be quite awful because it would reduce the Satanic healing and they would have a hero that could consistently do damage and man up to the Lina. But this game, they don't have that. TA, if she blinks on the Lina, I think she loses the man fight if there's a Satanic in play. She definitely actually loses the man fight. Um, as <laughs> The Untouchable just doesn't matter. It's less than half of the Lina's bonus attack speed. Bonus attack speed, not even attack speed, bonus. Lina still has like a, what, 120 base attack speed like every other hero or 100? So, uh, yeah, that's, that's definitely something. But yeah, he's going to continue to push in side lanes, and basically you want to push in the side lanes, clear the nearby camps, clear the waves. Essentially, try to avoid the enemy team and then TP into fights. If you can do that, you'll be the top net worth hero, but you should be, as the game continues to progress, even when you think you're strong, farming that next item and farming that next item. Yes, you show up to fights, you should be buying boots of travel. I'm a huge fan of the boots of travel, because all throughout the game, you farm so quick and can take all the space so efficiently 
that it really does feel very nice to have these these bots and be able to just take 30 40 percent of the map in 30 seconds no joke and then be able to tp in as we'll see uh okay he has no stacks that's something you have to be careful of right it, it is one of the downsides of this hero and part of the reason why the hero's win rate i think is lower than her actual strength should be basically i think the hero's win rate's low er than it should be because um of difficulty and largely that difficulty comes in landing the the w people don't pay attention to their stuns and they just try to chuck this shit out you're probably gonna miss a lot of the time and they don't keep their stacks up it's also hard to keep the mana pool up on this hero you kind of have to know when to go back to base for instance here actually his aegis is running out so he, he doesn't have to but realistically if he doesn't have aegis he would have to bots back to base and that's something to keep in mind if you're farming close to your base if you're on your own side of the map you should run back to base because you can bots to the other side but if you're on the other side of the map you can bots back to base uh for efficiency that's that's another little tip there all right getting to one of the team fights of the game so they get chased here he actually their team makes a mistake and he nearly gets destroyed he does have an armor problem um definitely an armor problem here sometimes that's why people will buy scotty gives you uh, a bit of armor something to keep in mind i also think um it's a bit it's actually hard to make up for this hero's armor item uh, armor problem it definitely is I, I would say that probably is one of the downsides of the hero because there's not a lot of items i can think of that would you don't really want to buy ac because you don't need the attack speed shiva's is not an attack item really doesn't feel too good butterfly you don't need the attack speed or the agi so yeah it's actually definitely a potential issue for this hero um and she hates the scotty buyers for sure like lena carrier really does not like tb uh or or uh, medusa these are two matchups i definitely generally wouldn't want to play into i guess medusa can be okay because you can outrange her so that one sort of depends it depends on if they have uh, a way to get you close to the dusa like enough stuns or repositioning tools but yeah in this fight here he dodges the echo with the bkb and watch him get to work i'm gonna play this fight in one time speed and you just see him just pump damage uh a lot of it comes down to the bkb usage here i mean this bkb usage was kind of risky as he gets it barely off here the shaker kind of messed up on the chain stun let's be real but Gets off the Satanic, kills up the full, onto the TA, just destroying her refraction. And even through BKB, you just hit so consistently so hard. Currently, he's hitting for 260 damage. And keep in mind, three of his items are not even damage items. Right? They're just, they're not. They're not. And also, another thing to note is that you have an attack talent at level 20, which makes you get 15 more attack speed per stack, uh, putting you up to, what, 85 per stack? I'm sorry, 55 per stack, which is just nuts. All right, we're going to see a high ground attempt here, and for his final item, he went for the Scotty. I think this is definitely somewhat game dependent. He is uh, he's against the Razor and the TA, even the Ench. So Razor and the TA are ranged heroes, so the Scotty effect is doubled. And the Razor build that is most popular right now, even though this guy is unbelievably poor. Wow, this is the most poor Razor I've seen in my life. He is 1 in 13. He really did not recover from that laning stage. But uh, yeah, basically, the Scotty is very good this game because it also counters the Bloodstone healing from Razor. So it's it's just a fantastic Scotty game. And it gives him some armor. But yeah, look, the TA just can't man up at all. And you can say like, oh, this TA is poor. She's not Giga Farm, but it, this is not some mega poor TA. Even if TA had Daedalus and Hurricane Pike, which would be her next two items, you just wouldn't win the man fight. It wouldn't even be close. And he's uh, yes, he's 7k gold up. He's more than he's like an item and a half on the TA. But look at him go, just absolutely chatted up. He's got the pipe to help him out, just making it impossible for the enemy to do anything, to look for uh, for them to look for any place. As he's going to get gone on by the shaker here, just lives, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, but all in all, I, I think this build is honestly kind of broken, guys. I do believe that as people continue to experiment with Lena Carey, work out all the different builds you can go, the different play styles you can play, because this hero is flexible too. It can go bots, it can go phase boots if you want to get aggressive for some reason, it can go falcon blade. Uh, into into Maelstrom, into Shadowblade, and play a pickoff style. It can rush. It can go Falcon Blade, Maelstrom, BKB first uh, first few items and get active in the fights. It can go Gleitnir and be like, if your team lacks the Sable, it can set up with a Gleitnir rush. It feels fine. It makes you tanky. Um, gives you some armor with the Agi it gives. I mean, there's there's different ways to play this hero. There's a lot of routes you can go, and I believe that's going to cause this hero to become more and more popular as time goes on. So nonetheless, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Peace! And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.